Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your choosing our theater. To make this experience more enjoyable for everyone, we hope you'll refrain from talking during the show. Enjoy the movie. Thank you. Bizarre. Very strange or unusual range 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 or unusual or unusual 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 And let's relax. Welcome to the Maverick Files. Number one. This is Annalise Michelle, born in 1952 in West Germany. She tragically passed away at the young age of 23 due to malnutrition and dehydration. But it's not a case of parental or guardian abuse though, they would later be taken to court for such a case. No, young Annalise had passed away after a year-long fight with demons from hell. Or, at least, that's what her parents believed, and the church, and even some on the jury. The offense would go on to say that due to her strict religious upbringing, the idea of rejecting medication was easier once a religious answer was involved hence her parents taking her off her meds in her final years. Poor Annalise would have nearly 70 exorcisms performed on her, but she lost the battle on July 1st, 1976. Her exorcists would claim that she was possessed by multiple demons and evil spirits, even claiming that, at some points, Lucifer and Adolf Hitler had taken over her body. While those claims seem, well, I'll let you form your own opinion about that, they were still capable of recording some audio of a few of the exorcisms. Here is a recorded exorcism being performed on Annalise. Before I play it, and whether you believe in the supernatural or a skeptic, I must warn you that this is disturbing. Number two. What if I were to tell you that there's a funded project in the United States that's entire purpose is to search for alien life forms? What if I were to tell you that there's a chance that they have discovered extraterrestrial evidence? What if I were to tell you that the evidence they discovered came from a source that's possibly 18 sextillion miles away. Back in 2012, scientists had discovered a radio burst that they labeled as FRB-112-1102. It wasn't until 2015 that astronomer Paul Schultz at McGill University in Canada had discovered 
10 additional signals nearly identical with the 2012 radio burst. The apparent size of these bursts would deter them to rule out the possibility of this being a collision of stars and neutrons due to its repetition-like behavior. And this would only further their case when FRB-112 would almost begin to have a cycle. After a certain amount of time, whatever source it originated from, it would send out more radio bursts. Here is the sound that the scientists have recorded. The origin of this sound still remains unknown, but it's indeed a fact that this sound is being generated from inside a dwarf galaxy, a galaxy which contains approximately several billion stars versus the Milky Way's 400 billion stars. But the mystery behind the sound is, where does it come from? Or who does it come from? Number three. The forest is home to many things natural, even if their origins are hard for us to understand. They are there naturally, where they belong, in an ecosystem that benefits all forms of life. But sometimes, just sometimes, a user will claim stories about woodland creatures that aren't so natural. And it's easy to debunk these stories as fiction. Well, that was the case, until one person recorded a sound that borderline mirrors unexplainable. As haunting as it is, and nearly disturbing as it is, I wouldn't be so quick to draw it up as supernatural. It very well could have been mating season when this was recorded, or it could have just been animals hollering for whatever reasons. You tell me, is the sound emanating from a deer or something else? Remember, the forest is home to many things natural, even if their origins are hard to understand. Number four. All right, it's time I put on my big boy pants and muster up the courage to introduce the next terrifying noise. Perhaps I'm just overreacting. This is a recording of WKCR's 89.9 radio.
1997, Peter Gilmore sent a robber set of Gary Bowie ball cans and being there and taking place of father shading over the windows of Mark Benjamin. And then in 1988, John Dunn, son of John Sidney Mill, and brother Captain Fist at the front of the scene in the Sunday 21st, 1988, Barry Valentino, son of Barry Sr. and Gene, brother Scott, Mark and Lisa, Anne's friend, my friend. February 1985, Frank Oppenheimer, brother of Robert Hilton, and Jack Emily, father of Michael, our friend. In 1987, Henry and Graham, brother of Ian and Ralph Sound, my friend. You're tuned to WKCR FM New York, 89.9 on your dial. Columbian music is running a little late. It will be starting in a few minutes. Nope. Still just as terrified. The backstory behind this audio has never been proven, if it's either some government conspiracy, alien recordings, some form of ARG, or just a really creepy prank. Throughout the clip, you begin to hear what appears to be someone reading off names, and it almost seems to be reading the names of the deceased, including the name Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. There is no confirmed history behind this, and honestly, that's what bothers me. There was an attempt of an ARG on TikTok based on this radio station, but supposedly, this recording right here was posted on 4chan's paranormal board as early as 2011. And in certain videos, it was stated that the recording was taken during the 1990s. So, its history still remains a mystery. Yeah, that rhymed. A mystery that, without a doubt, has kept me awake at night. Where do these sounds come from? Who's narrating the obituary? And why? Perhaps, some questions are better unanswered. Number 5 The sound I'm about to play actually comes with a video, so I'll let the video do the explaining. Hmm? So, not much explaining was really done. And honestly, I can't seem to verify if this is authentic or not. The man gets into his vehicle, leaves the camera on the seat, ignites the engine, and then we hear what seems to be the creature attacking his car. But then it sounds like he gets out of the vehicle, and the video ends. <laughs> And that part makes no sense to me. The car had already started. Why didn't he just drive away? I'm sure whatever beast that was chasing him could not keep up. And even if it landed on the roof, he could have easily maneuvered it off with a few hard turns. Also, how was the video even posted? It stops abruptly on him screaming. So, that implies it had been altered with before posting. And correct me if I'm wrong, but... It sounds like they're just recycling the same sound. <laughs> There's many holes in this video's logic, but if it's just trying to be a scary video, it did a pretty good job. I'll give them props for that. Mm. 
number six. If you've been in a car crash, then you know just how quick it all happens. A blink of an eye. All it takes is the fault of someone simply not paying attention. One look away from the road and you plummet into debt from insurance and hospital bills. You can even lose your job due to losing your transportation. Or even worse, loved ones are taken suddenly without a goodbye. It's a horrifying reality that happens way too often. If you've never been in an accident, what I'm about to show you is a POV display of what can happen. Even though the officers are trained professionals, you can still hear the fear in their voice. Them realizing that this could be their final moments. Take as many lanes as you can. Watch yourself, watch yourself. We are going to set up like this. He's coming right at us right now. Alright, we got him coming at us, dispatch. Watch yourself. Fuck. Fuck. The driver was intoxicated and reported to have been speeding down the wrong lane of the highway. So once called in, these officers showed up and tested fate. Luckily, everyone involved had survived, with the two officers only receiving minor injuries. After the 60-year-old driver was hospitalized, he was then placed into police custody. Let's just be thankful that this drunken fool won't be a threat for a very long time. Number seven. Space. It's full of nothing. Well, I shouldn't say nothing, but when it comes to life, it appears to be that we are the only ones out here, alone. We've searched throughout the galaxy to try and find anything even trying to record new discoveries. Though we hadn't discovered life, or supposedly we hadn't, we did make a rather unsettling revelation. It turns out that the planets all seem to radiate some kind of sound wave into space, and it's hauntingly beautiful. Without further explanation, I give you the sounds of space. Number eight. Fun fact in case you weren't aware, crows can imitate speech patterns and mimic all sorts of noises, thus making this next noise so odd.
I can't say it's terrifying, and if anything, it's wholesome watching him fluff up before chattering. But I can absolutely say it is bizarre. The first sound almost sounds like some sort of snore. With the second sound being, well, honestly, I have no idea. It could possibly be mocking some sort of phone notification. Could it be that this is a civilized crow greeting the fellow trucker? Or could it be that this crow is emanating alien speech patterns from outer space, from galaxies yet unreached? And could this be a threat towards our very freedom? Could this be it? Is this crow the bringer of the end days? Yeah, probably not. If you've enjoyed this video, why not feel free to hit the like button and possibly even subscribe. I appreciate any and all forms of support. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'm Time6. Have a good night. So as we end this, I just want to say I'm sorry for the re-upload. The original video was copyright claimed over the sample Daisy Bell. Even though Daisy Bell is released to public domain, and this series technically falls under fair use, an artist had used the Daisy Bell sample in one of their songs, and decided that anyone else using the sample owed them money. I disputed it because sometimes YouTube makes an error on their behalf. But then, the artist rejected my dispute. My only options were to appeal his claim, which would not only dox me, but also, it would almost guarantee a copyright strike on my entire channel, since he would be the one judging my appeal. Or, I could have just let it go and have the scumbag receive the revenue off the video, but fuck that. I'm not letting some penny-pinching thief illegally claim revenue off of my work. I could have also muted it, but this is terrifying noises from the internet. What good would it be if one of the sounds wasn't even available? Anyway, I linked the original Daisy Bell in the description, because it is still very interesting. And, obviously, I made a small adjustment to the video. Thanks for understanding. And to the artist who put me through all this trouble, fuck you. No, I won't name you. You don't deserve any clout.